Hey guys, Daniel here. Thank you so much for tuning into the second episode of Donato Plus One. Uh, just to reiterate, the vibe here is I invite musicians over who are far more talented than I am, and they come and play in my living room with me, having never met them prior. Um, Eddie Dunlap is the second guest uh, for this really fulfilling series, and uh, he plays on a number of hit records. Uh, here in Nashville and plays for a bunch of country artists and is a really great example of what a quote-unquote Nashville musician really is. So I'm glad y'all are able to witness someone such as myself make music with someone so talented, uh, such a master of the craft. We'll be talking about um, applying jazz chops and outside harmony ideas into like things such as pop settings and more commercial music ideas and we also talk about influences i talk about bob weir surprise surprise and we also jam for like eight minutes so catch it subscribe like it comment give me your opinion uh we're gonna have some more of these coming really soon but ultimately i just want everyone to keep in mind that uh the whole purpose of this is to um share with you all the the idea of the community of music and, and, and uh, how big of a deal it is to really just associate yourself with players who are who far exceed your talents so you can learn from them um, proximity effect in living in Nashville uh, that's one of the biggest assets of living here so it only makes sense to try to share this with the world so again thank you so much for watching I'm just gonna I gotta do it with the Yeah, and he's, he's, I can't say, no, I've heard a guitar player, uh, like I've heard, I'll hear a guitar player and say, that sounds like Bob Weir. Never. I've never heard that. He does weird things, man. Like, he'll do like, they'll do like a, he'll like play a shuffle like. Yeah. As opposed to. He's like, he's, he's a jazz guy, man. Indeed, brother. I think he was getting all that stuff from McCoy Tyner. Yeah, yeah, the horn play, yeah, exactly. He, he played keys. Oh, key. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. He played, uh, he played keys. Who was just padding and, and doing these crazy things for Coltrane to play over. That's right. Yeah, like and he's just ryth rhythmic chords. It's not just making chords for to play over. It's just more rhythmic than anything. It's, it's like he, itself. It's like Fred, he's just keeping... Keeping that pulse. I see, love it. See, that? I've gotten just so far, far away from that world because you know I, I, it, I play in a, a vocal instrument. Indeed. Right. You know. How so. does that work with steel? I guess you don't typically pass chords. On C, on C six, I would. Yeah. Like, I gotta okay, get used to this new volume pedal. It's it's pretty hot. <laughs> but they, but like I'll just.
Michael, brother. Damn, man. You have some really uh, fascinating improvisational ideas. Uh, well, it's kind of random right now because I'm trying to get my chops back, you know, do it. Club stuff. So that's what I've been working on is just improvisation. How do you practice that? Well, this... Used to, I'd, I'd, I'd be thinking about, okay, well, theoretically, you know, if I'm going to this chord, that chord, you know, yeah. I could, my, I'm thinking of passing co chords or ghost notes or yeah. something like that, but now it's just more off the cuff. It's like, okay, sure. get get out and uh, do like a real jazz musician. Don't do like a, you know, don't do like a like a, a trained musician, but do like a real jazz musician that just is fearless. Just yeah. hit something, whether it's right or wrong, yeah. and go with it and try to make it right. Yes, me. You know, like a Miles thing where it's just like, uh, what's that Herbie Hancock story where uh, Herbie made this huge claim during the middle of uh, when he was playing with Miles, and instead of Miles just looking at him and being wrong, Miles would like augment while he was playing to go, and the whole band would do it, and it's like, hey, that's that's where it's at. So that's what I'm trying to get into. Oh, wow. Yeah. How do you make that fit in with the intention of the music you're playing? Well, if it's if it's like rocking or or blue like a like a like a blues thing like yeah, any kind of three chord, yeah you just you just think it's three chords you know it's going around the horn you could even though it's one four or five to get back to the five you go six two five one is you're gonna you you're gonna think in that no matter what and then there's all kinds of diminished and augments in there so it's like Indy. if you think of okay if I start out with do 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 you know, something like that, then yeah. it's a lot oh, easier. You know, and then you think, okay, well, if you make a note along the way that's not right, which is me all the time, you, you just kind of augment, you just like a. So, but like with distortion, you have to think differently because sometimes you oh, get those real. It's, it's easier on guitar because you got you've got a more a specific range. You know, yes, you've got is. this much on guitar, whereas pedal steel, you got a lot of stuff going on, and the distortion reacts different. I think. See the oscillation. Sincerely. So, do you think the intonation has to be more spot on? To yeah. Pull off. Well, the intonation and your note selection. Like, you can do like fits, like. Yeah, so you're just going. But then, but then when you have that tritone in there, like if you go from a B to a B flat, where you go. You go. See, you hear that, that oscillation? Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. It just depends on the, the pedal and what you're playing and what key it's in and how it fits with the band. See, when you go when you go to when you go to fists or four, perfect fists or fours, you know, that's fine. Yeah. See, that's fine. But then, oh, it's real bad. Yeah. So it just. Are you familiar with Daniel Van Law's work? I love Daniel Van Law. Yeah. He's, now he's the real deal. Man. Is he? And he plays with no. He'll do distortion with no picks, but a lot of times he don't use a pedal. Like what's he'll that shake he does with the with like the. Uh, textures where it's like what are we hearing there do we have the pog on i've got i've got like a lo-fi delay the po well no i don't have i literally put the pog on and i have C a seagull setting it's like a crystallizer oh, like an h910 yeah. harmonizer and then so uh, harmonizer lo-fi delay and then a little dist a little distortion okay me, uh, where is the distortion in the chain there is it is it before all I, the chain? yeah I, i'll do I'll do uh, Pog, EQ, and then Timmy for like a little lighter, uh -huh. or it's not as distorted, but it's a little darker in tone, and the full-blown distortion, especially more so for guitar, I'll do the, the Prince of Tone. Mm -hmm. And you just plug your guitar into this board. Yeah, yeah, and I have a volume pedal insert, because the cool thing about the ES8 is you can put your volume pedal anywhere you want. Because oh, okay. sometimes, like Lenoir, 
Like he'll play like those uh, deluxe, like a tweet deluxe, and he'll he'll be rocking. The, he'll his distortion will be coming from the volume pedal, so he'll start out quiet, and then when he gets louder, he'll. So you have to go in here and you put your put your distortion like this. This amp has just this is mostly a clean amp, but it's got a little bit of singe because I like a little bit of harmonic breakup just for a normal pedal steel sound. Yeah. You know, for your clean clean sound as they call Indeed. it. Indeed. But they but if you wanted to really get that kind of tone, you have to move the volume pedal and the and the brain of the ESA before the distortion, which is technically not correct. But sometimes I like that. Sometimes I like having that because you can control that.